This is the Go For Puck Live podcast, episode number 28, recorded Tuesday, November 27th, 2012. Welcome to the Gopher Puck Live podcast. Along with Hammy and Vigo, I'm your host, Jupiter. Well, the Gophers made their first trip out to the East Coast since 2005, I do believe. And they swept Vermont. Nice sweep. Haven't swept on the road in a little while. Haven't been to the East Coast in a while. So a lot of good things happened this weekend. Hammy, Vigo, how you guys doing? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, okay. Um, Hammy. Your thoughts on the weekend against Vermont? Well, I mean, I think I was, you know, Friday night I was very happy with how the team kind of came out, especially in that second period and kind of took over the game. Um, It was nice to see, you know, for the weekend itself, you know, the five-on-five scoring that everybody was concerned about. You know, granted, Vermont isn't, you know, the greatest team, but nonetheless, you know, it's. I don't think they're quite as bad as people think. I think that they're a little better. Plus, they had some injuries, but... Um, you know, so I, I think that was a positive. It was really nice to see some of the lower line guys score. You know, it was, you know the AJ Michelsons and the Saratories. You know, those kinds of guys. You know, it's nice to see them getting goals and not having to completely rely on the you know the top two lines. So the, I thought overall it was a positive weekend. I, I knew Saturday would be a tougher game because you just can't expect uh, you know your opponent to just kind of fall flat two nights in a row on home ice. So I, I knew it was going to be a tougher game, but uh, I, I, I was pretty happy with how they played. Vigo, now, I, you know, Hammy mentioned it there, but I was impressed with Michelson and the way he played. You know, he got his first point Friday, got his first goal Saturday, which turned out to be the game-winning goal, and it was a beautiful goal. He didn't mess around, got the puck, shot it, and scored. So I was really impressed with him. What did you think about him this weekend? Yeah, I think he's faced a lot of adversity in the last three years. Uh, There's a lot of people questioning his game, and you know he kind of had to suck it up and come here as a little bit less heralded uh, recruit than he'd like to have been. And he put together a solid weekend, and you know it's good to see those secondary guys trying to assert themselves in the lineup because you. For this team to be good, they're going to need that secondary scoring that Lucci has been talking about from the opening media day. And we saw a little bit of it Saturday night. And, you know, if he steps up and makes a spot for, you know, whether it's the third line that he was on Saturday or if he's, you know, anchoring down the fourth line, that'd be good for him. Definitely. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, for him, you know, first of all, I've been kind of critical of his play, so I have to give him his props for having a good weekend, but I think really the key was moving him to wing, you know, so he's not maybe as quite as overwhelmed in that position. And I think that, uh, you know, he could just kind of play his game and just kind of go with the flow a little bit more. Maybe he felt a little less pressure. I don't know, but uh, I think that that move to wing was certainly a positive and uh, hopefully it'll be a omen for, you know, things to come. Now, Hammy, you've been down on one of the freshman defensemen, Mr. Shea, but how do you think he did this weekend? I mean, he got his first career goal, which is, which always is good to get off your shoulders. But to, what are your thoughts on him this past weekend? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think he stopped following me on Twitter because of my criticism. So maybe I should rip <laughs> on him. So. No, I, I, I thought he, you know, I thought in general the whole team played pretty solid defense. I mean, granted, Vermont's not a powerhouse yes. offensive team, so you kind of have to keep that, you know, into consideration. But uh, I thought he played pretty well. I thought, you know, the freshman you know, had a solid weekend. I thought the defense as a whole had a solid weekend. Of course, you know, when your goalie's playing as well as ours is, it, you know, that certainly helps your confidence out there as well. You you know, maybe you relax a little bit because you know that the guy behind you is, uh, you know, he's playing on top, he's on top of his game and playing well. So I think that uh, overall I was pretty happy with the whole team performance. Now, Viggs, how about the goalie situation? It, it's pretty much Wilcox's to lose now. Shabrowski's had some injuries. Obviously, he'll come in. He might get some spot duty here and there, but it looks like Wilcox is the guy. Yeah, he's he's played strong since opening weekend, and he's made that his net. I, I think it's going to be hard for Lucia to give anybody else a start in goal for, for quite a while here. Um, he's, he's looked good. It'll be nice that they'll have the holiday break coming up so he can get a little bit more rest. I know Lucia has been talking about going easier on him in practice and kind of lightening the load there so that he can play, um, you know, two games each weekend. And that's going to be something that they're going to have to watch a little bit. I mean, these guys play a lot of games in junior, but, uh, you know, 
you have to be you have to be worried that it could be too much for him, and he might you know lose the mental sharpness or something. But he's played great so far. Yeah, we've had that problem in the past where we've kind of rode somebody too much, and they've kind of wore down. We saw it in Kangas, we saw it in Patterson, we kind of saw it with everyone. So hopefully he does get uh, Shabrowski in there once in a while to give Wilcox a, a rest because he's a freshman. He, he's going to get tired. Well, I mean, he did play 43 games last year, so it's not like... Yeah, but, you know, know, he's got the books on top of that in school, and it's just, I would think it's a lot more tiring than what he's used to. I I mean, I'm not saying that that's not a role. I'm just saying that, you know, from a physical standpoint, I think that's it can be a little overrated in the sense that, I mean, come on, these guys are in the prime of their life, Mm -hmm. 20 years old. I mean... (laughs) <laughs> you know, I mean, playing two games a night, you know, or a weekend, I should say, is uh, shouldn't be that big of a deal for them, um, especially with how many games they've played over the years and whatever. But I understand from a maybe from a mental standpoint, I could I could see where you're coming from with that. Yeah, I think it's definitely more of a mental sharpness than an actual physical fatigue. Because sitting in that net for 20 minutes and and seeing five shots. And probably two of them, you know, could be odd man rushes coming your way. To stay mentally sharp during that two and a half hours can be challenging. I mean, I I know a lot of twenty somethings, and they're not sharp all the time mentally. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never sharp mentally any time of the day or year. Um, any other thoughts from the weekend, guys? It was good overall, I thought, you know, good to see him get out to the East Coast. You know, there's quite a few fans out there that we saw on TV, uh, which I was kind of surprised how many there were. But it was good to get a nice East Coast trip in there, and hopefully we're doing it more often in the years to come. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the one thing that I had mentioned on Twitter after that first game was, that, I mean, of course, it's it's easy to say, you know, hey, it was a yeah. great weekend when you win both games on the road, you know what I mean? But I, I actually really enjoyed seeing our team in a new rank, a different – arena, different atmosphere, you know, uh, out East. I mean, I just, I liked that, you know, I liked, and that's really what I've been excited about. I know some fans are not all that excited about the changes for conference coming up next year and whatever, but for me, it's like, yeah, you know, we get a little bit more variety, you know, we get at least a non-conference play. We have more flexibility, you know, to see some different teams over the end. I, I kind of like that. So it was kind of fun for me to see them out in Vermont. And Vermont had a great old barn, a, kind of a Quonset hut type of building built in the early 60s, you know, with the wood ceiling going all the way across. It looked beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it reminded me of some of the rinks that I've seen, you know, in some of the high school rinks yeah. around the state, you know, some of the older ones and whatever that that I grew up, you know, either playing or watching teams in. And I kind of, I kind of like that. Just kind of had a cool vibe to it. Well, Gorg and McLeod were drooling all over it. So (laughs) they seem to enjoy it though. I'm surprised because, you know, what a lot of people don't know is that FSN was planning on not sending them out there last weekend. They were going to just have them call it from the studio and try to fake it. But, uh, they decided to send them out there last minute, apparently. So they were in attendance and called the game. But uh, we'll see how long that continues, because I know FSN tried that a few years ago, and they fooled most people. A lot of people didn't know that they uh, faked it. But uh, we'll see. Was that the C- was that it it was a CC game a few years ago. They sent Marty yeah. Gellner out there to do interviews. But, uh, you know, at the time, Mazako and Woog were calling it from a studio. So... They were going to do it this week, but apparently some issues came up and they couldn't do that. So, hmm. But all on a great weekend. The old barn, it was great to see. And obviously, uh, two wins does make us feel a lot better as well. Well, let's look at the rest of WCHA. Um, boy, Badgers are looking bad. Get swept at home from Minnesota State, Mankato. Vigo, uh, they're in trouble. And it's not going to get a whole lot better. I know they have Denver, <laughs> no, it's not. Denver uh, on their travel plans this weekend. And, you know, say what you will about Denver dropping two this past weekend. Denver's a talented team, and it's not like they didn't come to play against New Hampshire and uh, Yale. I mean, those are two tight games. And uh, Wisconsin's in for tr- some trouble because I think Denver's going to be able to score some goals, and that's something Wisconsin is just not doing right now. Uh, they're they're struggling to generate offense. Well, Hammy, they do get a couple guys back soon, don't they? 
Yeah, I think uh, – <clears throat> I don't know entirely what if Zingerly – I think th- I saw something online today where he was going to be traveling with the team out okay. to Denver or whatever. I, I don't – you know, it's not like I follow the Badgers that closely. But um, I think I saw something like that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I know that uh, – I think this was the last week – last weekend was the last weekend for um, – the uh, suspension, or you know, that suspension for uh, oh, his name's slipping my mind right now. Uh, Curlies, yeah, Curlies. I mean, I'm sorry. And, and uh, so, I mean, that will probably, uh, uh, you know, certainly probably help them out. But nonetheless, uh, you know, there's certainly a lot of turmoil going on there, and, and uh, they're not scoring goals. Maybe those guys, if they return to the lineup, will help a little bit, but. It's pretty hard to pick uh, against Denver at home this weekend. Well, you were tweeting earlier this week saying how, you know, since uh, the Badgers lost Marco Siki to uh, become a head coach at Iowa State, they're sub-500. And obviously, <clears throat> early this season, they lose Bill Butters, and they haven't won a game at home. In fact, the only game they won, I believe, was a road game at Duluth. One in seven, uh, tie here or there, whatever – it's not looking good at all. I mean, it's – and it's just becoming a thing since the past, past few years. Well, I mean, I think Osiki was uh, definitely a, a very good assistant coach to have on his staff. He was a good recruiter. You know, I think that um, his loss – and, then, you know, I think you compound it when you replace him with a guy that had been out of college hockey for a while. I mean, Butters was a good coach back in the day. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about his coaching ability or, or anything about him as a person, but, you know, it is tough to kind of just jump right back into the college game after not being in it for a long time. And, uh, you know, to expect a guy to make all those recruiting contacts and hit the ground running on, I mean, it, it's just not that easy. And so, um, you know, I, I think that losing him and then the choice that they made, I, I don't know who all applied for that job back in the day, but uh, you have to question whether that was really the right choice, and obviously him leaving, you know, part way through the season wasn't a good sign for them as well. So yeah, it's there's a lot of turmoil going on there. Well, knowing them, they'll get you know they'll get those guys back, and they'll probably be a formidable opponent later this season. I, I don't think we've heard the last of Wisconsin. Well, they play that kind of style that they'll they'll stay in games a lot of the time, you know. And I think that um, I mean I wouldn't as, want to play them in the WCHA playoffs. Well, right. I mean, I think yeah. it's because it's, it's one of those things where they keep it close. You know, they 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 generally keep games close. I mean, that's kind of been Eve's style over the years. You know, you, they're not going to score a lot, but they're not going to give up a lot usually either. So, um, you know, I think that they'll I think they'll improve. But you know, they've dug themselves such a deep hole already that you, it's pretty hard to envision them being in the NCAA's unless they win the WCHA uh, Final Five. Yeah, unless they greatly improved. Right now, they're pretty much stuck as a spoiler for now. Yeah, I will say the difference with Wisconsin, if, they're, if they can score three goals, they've got a chance just about in any game. And yeah. the problem is they're scoring one or two goals most games. So, you know, maybe getting these guys back in the lineup makes them a three-goal team again mm-hmm. and puts them in a little bit more competitive shape. Well, when one of your guys has eight goals and the rest of the team has ten, I mean, that's not good. <laughs> All right, well, it was definitely an odd thing to see Mankato go in there and sweep. I don't know if they've ever done that, but uh, I bet you, you know, they're glad that they don't have to play Mankato at the Kohl Center anymore. They'll have their Big Ten opponents and won't have to play those little schools from Minnesota anymore. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that that was kind of a little bit of a sweet taste in uh, Mankato's mouth when they left that, you know, it was kind of an F you to uh, – Wisconsin for you know not wanting to play the little guys anymore. So <laughs> definitely, um, Alaska Anchorage and Bemidji State three points for Bemidji. You guys have any thoughts on that? You know, I caught some of the games on that little Lakeland TV, but not too much. Yeah, I watched a little bit too, uh, just because of the Gopher game got mm-hmm. over you know early because of the time. But uh, yeah, it was uh, quite honestly, it was one of a passing interest. You, know, you watch a little bit here or there and. Uh, you know, it seemed like they were pretty competitive games, but I mean, they're not the top of the heap teams either. So you kind of expect them to be competitive. All right, well, I'll just skip the rest of that because nobody cares about that series. Uh, Saint Cloud and Duluth split. Do you know anything about that series, Viggs? Uh, other than that, I did call Duluth getting one win out of this series, so Ooh, wow. it, was, it was, and it was that's their one WCHA win. All right. <laughs> 
I know. I felt like they could pull one out. <laughs> yeah, I was on that bandwagon too for the split. <laughs> yeah, well, I I didn't think Duluth would fall off that much. I I really didn't think they would. I mean, obviously they lost some scoring, but uh, they're in the basement right now. Well, they only got three goals on the weekend, so it sounded like they got a ton of scoring. Well, some guys aren't performing. I would say that. Well, I mean, they, they don't have those top, you know, JT Brown or Connolly, you know, to kind of carry the load anymore and and, and keep the opposition's, uh, you know, attention on them. They, these these lower line guys from like last year or whatever, they're not stepping up. You know what I mean? So that's that's their big problem. Yeah. And in one non-conference series we could talk about, I thought, was North Dakota and Notre Dame split. I believe that was up in Grand Forks, wasn't it? You know uh, I think that I think that was in actually, I think it was at Notre I, Dame. I really don't remember, actually. So, uh, you guys have any thoughts on that series? Uh, well, I mean, I think that, you know, yeah, that was at Notre Dame, that okay. series. Okay, okay, I wasn't um, sure. You know, I, I don't know really what's – I mean, North Dakota didn't really score that many. I mean, they had two goals both nights. So, you know, but Notre Dame is a pretty good team. And, uh, you know, with Lucia, you know, back in the lineup. And, they, you know, they've got some talent there. I mean, they don't have, I think, a lot of uh, scoring. But I think that they're a pretty good team overall. And I, I'm – you know, it's North Dakota. They're always going to be one of those teams that are a little bit up and down in that first half, you know, and you don't really entirely – they're kind of just find their bearings. And you know that they'll be – playing pretty good hockey in the second half. So I, I suppose it's sort of standard operating procedure for them right now. Okay. Well, we have a question via email from a Megan Johnson that I forgot to read last week. My bad. Sorry, Megan. With the X being empty, is there any chance the Gophers playing a game or two over there? I'm sure that bars and restaurants could use the business. I don't see any chance that happening, but Vigo, do you think there's any chance? A little unlikely. <laughs> I mean, I, I know some of the people up in North Dakota would love to have that because, the, you know, I know that's one of their thoughts on their message boards. Like, hey, let's get one of the game at the X, get more people, blah, blah, blah. I just don't see Minnesota giving up the home game for that. Yeah, I think the only times they've played at the X has been the Wisconsin games and then when Mankato decided to have their games there. Yeah. I, I, I know Lucio just likes to keep it, you know, safe, safe and simple at Mariucci. <laughs> Remember, you would, oh wait, go ahead. I was going to say it'd be interesting. I mean, that's an interesting idea. I, I mean, I don't know that, you know, I certainly would agree that you don't give up your home ice at Mariucci against, you know, a team like say North Dakota. You know, I think that you're like, you, you have to take advantage of those games, but you know, if, you got some other series that, you know, maybe you feel like, hey, you know, we can bring that um, fan following over there and maybe add to it. I could see that. I mean, I'm not saying it would ever happen, but I could see the thought process behind that. And it wouldn't be such a bad idea, but I doubt it would happen. Remember, you can always email your questions to podcast at gopherpucklive.com, and we'll try to get to them. But Twitter has been kind of waking up a little bit here on questions. Um let me see. TS Med Eight asking, "What are our thoughts of Marshall moving to forward and Alt still getting blue line time?" Well, personally, I, Marshall has not been at forward recently, and uh, well, I've always been down on Alt. But Hammy, what do you think about that? You, I, I think Marshall's pretty much good back on D now. Yeah, I have to. I have to say that. I, I mean, I've been pretty impressed with how how he's played this year. I mean, he's really stepped up. I, I think he has more. I the feeling I have is he he looks like he has more confidence out there to make plays. I think that uh, maybe that first year, you know, I was a little bit of you know un, unsure about when you should jump into the play, when not. I think he has more experience and confidence now. So I I like him. If, I think he's been one of the better defensemen on the team as far as uh, you know consistency and you know on both ends of the rink. So I, I like him at you know defense. Um, as far as alt goes. He hasn't played as well as he's capable of. Um, I think that that's kind of obvious. I think that, uh, you know, he's had his moments where he's made mistakes, but he's played well at other times. I just think it's about finding that consistency with him. And, um, you know, I think he'll find it as the season goes on. But uh, certainly I, I think that he needs to step it up a little bit. Any thoughts there, Beegs? Well, I think part of it, when you look at a guy like Alt, 
is he needs game time. You know, he didn't grow up as one of those guys who played a ton of hockey. And so for him to improve, he's going to have to get some games in. He's going to have to get his game on tape, and they're going to have to coach him up. Um, with Marshall, I think he's one of their steadiest guys back there. He's probably one of their better natural stick handlers, able to go back, retrieve the puck, start the breakout. And they need guys like him and Schmidt to play a lot of minutes. If they're going to take guys like Shea and Riley and, and Alt and, and work them in the lineup, you know, they need steady guys who can eat up more ice, especially in those critical times of the game. Okay, another question via Twitter from Josh Svensson. How is Justin Clues doing down in the USHL? Can't wait to see him in the maroon and gold. Well, he's done. He's obviously he's done very well. He's uh, right now. Last I checked, he was in third place in the league scoring down there, and uh, you know he's averaging almost two points a game, uh, which in the USHL is pretty unheard of. I mean, granted, it's only fifteen, you know, twenty games into the season, but they still have another you know thirty plus games to go, but. Uh, you know, to be him, both him and Camarada, I mean, Camarada's over two points a game. I mean, they've been insanely good so far this year uh, in the USHL. So, yeah, I mean, and I mentioned this, la- you know, what was it, last week or, or two weeks ago, whatever it was, you know. Mm-hmm. We don't know, you know, I, I would not be shocked if some of the injury situation and some of the other stuff, it would not shock me. If they bring him in halfway through, it's not like it's never happened at Waterloo before. I know it's happened to their team a couple times, and their coach doesn't really seem to have a problem with it. Um, so I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it, it wouldn't shock me given how he's played. And, and if you know our lower line guys don't, you know, I mean, we saw some improvement this weekend. But if we needed some additional offense, and if Warning's situation doesn't, you know, improve enough, it it won't shock me if they decide to bring him in. Definitely something to keep an eye on if something goes wrong down after you. I mean, obviously, things have been quiet with Sam Warning. We still don't know. It's just an upper body injury, and, you know, he may be back this week or he may be back the next week. It's just you just never know. Another question, Joshua Kreitzer. Who do you feel is the best two-way player? Seems like a lot of our top six guys also play on the penalty kill. What do you think, Biggs? Well, I like Boyd as one of the better two-way players. I think he and, and Hala are, are really steady out there, both ends of the ice. They're both good in the face-off circle, which you want on special team situations. You want a guy who can go out there and win and draw. Same thing with Bukestad. You know, he can go out there and win big draws and eat up a lot of space out there, win the one-on-one battles. And I think that's key for all three of those guys. And, and what's going to make that penalty kill for the Gophers a real strength? you have any thoughts on that, Hammy? Yeah, my personal favorite is Nate Condon. Uh, I really like the way he plays the game. I love his speed. I like how he plays. He's always been pretty defensively responsible. Um, I certainly think that you know he's improved as time has gone along as, as far as offense goes. He's not going to be the big gun necessarily, like you know you see with Bukestad or some of those guys. But I really like the you know the two way threat, so to speak, that he is out on the ice. So I, that'd be my answer. Okay, we've got Marty Manley asking on Twitter, I'm going on a gopher hockey road trip to Colorado Springs in nine days. Never been to that altitude. Is it okay to drink heavily? <laughs> we should have drunk hockey guy on the show for that answer. <laughs> Definitely. I think as Mar- long as Marty avoids Breckenridge, he'll be okay. <laughs> but uh, my experience in Colorado Springs is you can you can have a good time just fine, <laughs> oh, and they do serve beer at that rink. So ooh, at Colorado Springs, yeah, nice craft beer. It's a nice it's a nice place. Denver too, <laughs> uh, quality beer. Tigsy wants to know quality hockey in Nebraska. Weird. What's next? Knowledgeable fan base in Wisconsin. <laughs> Cheap shot. I like that. <laughs> oh, what else do we have here? Oh, well, Jared Klein, he wants to know, what do you guys think of Hall, better at forward or D? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think I've made it known over time that I wasn't the biggest fan of his on defense. You know, it's kind of hard to judge when we haven't seen a ton of him on mm-hmm. defense this year. So um, I thought, you know, I think he's actually played pretty solid at forward, you know, in the time that he's been given. Um I, you know, I don't know if, you know, what their plans are as far as shuffling guys in and out of the lineup and all that, if they're going to continue to do that or whatever. But 
I actually don't think he's played all that badly um, for what you know for the time he's been given so far this year. So props to him on that. You know, I think he's looked okay. You know, obviously he doesn't have the speed, but I think he's got the puck handling skills to do that up there. But you know, I think he's still trying to learn to how he needs to play up there. So hopefully we'll see more out of him up there. What do you think, Viggs? Well, I think with the defensive situation, trying to get Shea, Riley, and all some ice time mixed in there with Schmidt and Marshall and, and Helgeson, he's not going to find a lot of ice time back there. So I think for him to help the team, he's going to have to keep plugging away at wing. He's been okay as you know, kind of that uh, bubble hockey wing going straight up and down the, the ice. Mm-hmm. So I, I think he'll be fine there. He just probably needs some more games under his belt. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Well, Hammy, uh, is there any recruiting news besides the good stuff we're hearing about Clues and Camerata? Uh, you know, I mean, nothing Any that's... tidbits, any think players to look for, or maybe who the Gophers are looking at? Well, I mean, high school hockey just started, uh, you know, and uh, certainly there's going to be guys like uh, Hurley and uh, Gersich and, you know, some of those players that, I mean, everybody's pretty well aware of, you know, on Gopher okay. Puck Live at least. And, uh, you know, I mean... The, I know that uh, Polganski from, uh, you know, St. Cloud Cathedral. I mean, you know, there's different guys that they've been looking at and I, that they're interested in. I don't know of anything that's, you know, pending for a decision like now, you know, or this week or whatever. But, uh, I'm, you know, it wouldn't surprise me once the uh, season gets a little bit more into the swing of things that uh, we see some action, you know, in the next couple months. Okay. Well, let's move into this week in the WCHA. We'll kick it off with UMD heading to Michigan Tech this weekend. Uh, boy, dogs are struggling. Tech's doing a little better. Vigo, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that Duluth is obviously probably going to struggle again. You know, they're, they're having a hard time scoring goals. And, you know, Tech's been a little bit more offensive in the last year and a half. And I think it probably continues. Uh, I would say Tech's going to get three points here. Um, I'm sorry for all those Bulldog fans, but I, I think they need more time to find who's going to step up and score for them. Pammy? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's probably a pretty good take. I mean, I, you know, these teams, you know, for as much as we kind of, you know, rag on a little bit on scoring for Duluth, I mean, Tech really hasn't scored a heck of a lot more in that sense. So, I mean, uh, you know, it'll, I'm sure, I have the feeling it's probably going to be, you know, relatively – well, you know, I don't know. You never know. One of those games might be one of those up and down – where you know, a lot more goals scoring than you really expect. But uh, I would expect a couple close games, and I think that uh, certainly you ex- think that Tech at home would have the advantage. I'm going to go with Tech with a sweep there, just to piss off drunk hockey guy. Okay. He'd probably agree with you. Uh, he might. He's pretty down in his team right now, so uh, we shouldn't brag on him too much. He might cry. Bemidji State heading to Minnesota State University, Mankato. Hammy, do you have anything on that? Uh, I would say Mankato sweeps that one. I, I mean, oh, it's hard. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, honestly, it's hard to pick against them given the fact that they just came off a road sweep. Now, of course, you always worry about a, a letdown a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I just think that they're, you know, they, after watching them against the Gophers and then seeing how they played against uh, a little bit against Wisconsin and some of these other teams, I think that, you know, they're the better team of the two. And, and I think that uh, maybe, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe one of those games ends up at a tie, but I think that I'd probably go with a uh, Mankato sweep. Vegas? I think they're going to split because uh, okay. I know that Mankato lost two to St. Cloud and, you know, they lost two to Denver. So, you know, a sweep over Wisconsin maybe doesn't mean as much as it might appear on paper with Wisconsin struggling as much. And Bemidji, you know, they'll, they'll try to battle and it could be low scoring games. So I'm thinking it'll be a split. St. Cloud making the big trip up to Alaska Anchorage. Uh, what was your pick? Yeah, I, I trying don't, to avoid it. Yeah, I you don't. A lot of that one. I just don't care about either team. Uh, then you you went to Mankato. Yeah, I did go to Mankato, but that was so long ago. <laughs> That's when they were still Mankato State in a Division Two or whatever team. Boy, I, I, I can see that you're a well tied in alum. I'm not. I just yeah. I was a Gopher fan before I went down there, so it's kind of tough. I'll say split, just to say split, and blah blah blah. St. Cloud heading up to Anchorage, Hammy. 
does anything for you? Well, I mean, on paper, of course, you expect that St. Cloud's going to sweep that series, and you know, they played pre- you know they played pretty well, yeah. and you have to give them, you know, credit for that. And uh, you know, I think that they're a lot better team. I mean, I think I picked them like fourth, or I can't remember what it fourth in that range. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, they've kind of lived up to what I thought they'd do. I, th- I thought they'd be a pretty solid team, and but you always say. You never know what the hell is going to happen when you have to travel all that distance up to Anchorage, and it's probably even a little bit more of a hassle for a team that's outside of the Twin Cities to have to come down here, and then they have to go. And um, So I am going to say that one of those games will end up in a tie, and they'll get three points. I'm with you. I think uh, you never know what's going to happen up there, and I'm thinking maximum St. Cloud gets three points, maybe even a split. What do you think, Viggs? I, I would say three points as well. I think they probably get a tie. Uh, St. Cloud probably doesn't have the charter flight like the Gophers had to Vermont last week for their trip out to Alaska. Yeah, they had a nice little deal there. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that looked nice. I saw some uh, Twitter photos that yeah. guys were posting of the, the charter, which is always nice for travel. Maybe that's what the you know the key is for all their road series down the line is charter flights. <laughs> well, as Grant, Grant Patoli once told me, we are go for hockey. You know, I asked him. Oh. About, I asked him about a recruiting <laughs> trip, and I said, "You're not driving, are you?" And he's like, "No, we are go for hockey." So, in other words, they're not cheap. So you know. Well, I'm sure they drive to some of, some of the close you know, high school, but you're probably right. You know, a little little puddle jumper to Omaha or wherever it may be. Well, okay. Um, North Dakota heading to Colorado College, Hammy. We got two teams tied in the standings. Uh, they both played, you know, two less games than the, you know, the rest of us here. Uh, what do you think? Boy, I mean, it, it'll be interesting. I, I uh, you know, I, I just when I think that I have a good feel for, you know, both of those teams, I, you know, something happens that kind of throws it a little bit for a loop. I'm actually going to call that one a split because I just think that uh, I don't think uh, North Dakota's hitting on all cylinders, but they, they'll do enough, I think, to win one of those nights. So uh, I think that'll be a road split. What do you think, Vigo? I hate to wimp out and do the same thing, but I, I think CC is a you know, top-half team, so I, so I think they're definitely going to get at least two points this weekend. But I think North Dakota is also a top-half team, so, and they've got all their guys in the lineup. None of them are on suspension that I know of, so... <laughs> I, I can see a split there. That's well, what you have to check every week. You see if there's any yeah, suspensions. I was going to say it's only Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't get my grain for Carroll anymore, so you know, <laughs> got to check the police blotter. I'm going with CC with three points there. I think uh, still early in the season for North Dakota to make their run. You know, they'll start making their run in January. I'm surprised right. you didn't call us sweep for Saint, or uh, for CC. No, I got to give North Dakota something. Give them annoy, some, I, I got to throw annoy, bo- You got to annoy Goon. Right? Yeah, I got to throw Goon a bone here and there. You're not sure how that North Dakota goaltender is going to do. He's not very experienced. Oh, jeez. Yeah, exactly. Man, they, well, you know, they were all over us. Oh, you're gonna, your goalie's going to suck. Ours is going to rule. I'm like, whatever. Well, I mean, you know, the ironic thing about it is. Uh, Gothberg hasn't actually done – I mean, he, he hasn't played as well. I mean, everybody kind of had him as the more hyped goalie as compared to Wilcox, and and uh, obviously it's not quite turned out that way. The Gophers, you know, are, are feeling pretty good about having Wilcox in their lineup. Definitely. Finally, we've got those poor Badgers heading out to Denver this weekend, and I see this is getting kind of ugly. Uh, four points for the Pioneers. Hammy. Yeah, I think it's going to be a long weekend for uh, Wisconsin. I think it's going to be a long trip back as well, considering uh, I really expect them to probably get handed to them pretty good uh, both nights. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll surprise me. Like if, you know, some of these guys come back into the lineup and, you know, maybe they'll, you know, maybe they'll surprise them one night. You never know with a goalie, you know, if a goalie gets hot or whatever. Yeah. But it's, it's pretty tough to pick against Denver, especially – they're obviously going to be feeling pretty sour after getting uh, no wins this last weekend as well. So uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Wisconsin's kind of catching them at a bad time. Denver sweep, Vigo? Yeah, I got to go with the Denver sweep. They're, they're a pretty tough team, and Wisconsin's going to have a hard time scoring goals there. Sorry, our phone's ringing here. Give me a second here. Is it Eves? Yeah, he's yeah. calling, bitching about something. 
he, he looks so stressed after the Gopher series. I can hardly imagine what he's going to look like next weekend. Uh, well, hopefully Isn't that how he always looks? Like? <laughs> um, he just looked completely spent. Really? <laughs> you know, it's like, what do they say? You know, if he had the lump of coal, you know, turned into a diamond. I mean, that'd be, to me, that's what that guy, in, you know, encapsulates, you know, this. He's just very uptight looking all the time. Well, hopefully he's not taking it out and beating his players again. Uh, I don't think that'll be going on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, finally we've got Nebraska Omaha heading to Mariucci Arena this weekend. The first above 500 team that the Gophers will play or pairwise ranked team the Gophers will play so far this season. Obviously, um, we've been pretty lucky on our schedule so far but it gets a lot tougher this weekend amy yeah i mean it'll be an interesting uh you know series to be honest i mean you know when i look at uno's schedule i mean they've really not played you know great clubs for the most part i mean they've had you know they play, did play notre dame I, but i mean bemidji you know tech duluth at least alabama, they're about 500 alabama huntsville i but I, my point is is that you know, you you do have to look at, you know, just like you do with our, you know, schedule and record and everything like you kind of have to look at the big picture. And, you know, they haven't been playing great teams just like we haven't in most for the most part. And so you kind of have to say, well, you know, maybe this is one of those weekends where you, you kind of see who what the real team is really all about. You know, um, I think that will, you know, I think that uh, maybe this is a weekend that the guys need to step up and kind of make a statement and say, hey, you know, we've been kind of not playing our best and uh, now's the time to kind of start putting the gas down. And uh, I really think that we'll get at least three points this weekend because I just think that the guys will come out and with some energy and uh, we'll see. I'm thinking a split. Um, I'm still not convinced this team is there yet. Uh, Just a lot of inconsistencies on the offensive side, you know, finally a tough team coming into their barn, you know, because so far, it really hasn't been, you know, obviously record-wise, they haven't played any tough teams. So I'm thinking split. You know, has always played as tough here, so or at least the time they were here. Vigo, what do you think? You know, I feel like the safe pick is to do a split here. But, you know, you look at Nebraska's schedule and who they've played and their, their six-game winning streak over Tech, Duluth, and Huntsville, and it's not all that intimidating. Um, I know Ryan Walters is putting up a ton of points for them. I, th- I think he's we didn't got, need him. He's yeah, you know, we didn't need him obviously, <laughs> but he's got 16 points for Dean Blaze. Uh, so I, I feel like a split's a safe call, but at the same point, I think Minnesota started to pick up their game a little bit more against Vermont. They're playing a little more consistently, five on five. Uh, I think their their young defensemen are getting a little bit more ice time under them, and hopefully they've been coached up enough here where they can start making another step. And it's at home, so battle him, sweep. Ooh, Ooh. showing some guts. I like that. Definitely showing some guts there. Well, Hammy, you know he kind of talked about Mister Walters there. Uh, any bad feelings on Minnesota or side on that? Did they make the right decision on not bringing him in? Because obviously he's doing pretty well. Well, I mean, I think you, you know, I'm sure that it's a, a case of he's probably matured a bit. I think that that whole situation for him, I mean, he's older now and I'm sure that there's a maturity that, you know, he's gained and I'm, sh- and I think it's probably showing in his performance and, uh, you know, he's not taking, you know, the, the penalties and, uh, you know, it looks to me like he's just matured, you know, as a person. And so, you know, good for him. That's great. You know, and I, I don't think that I'm sure for him, you know, he wants to come back home and, and, you know, prove something like a lot of Minnesota kids do when they go to other teams and they come home and play at Mariucci against the Gophers. They want to, of course, show that, hey, you guys should have had me in here or whatever. But in hindsight, I think when you look back at that time, I think that the Gophers made the right call, not because the kid doesn't have any talent or anything of that nature. I just think that that was the right call to make at that time. And, hey, he chose not to wait. And, you know, that's his prerogative. And, you just have to move on. And I think the Gophers showed last year, and, and I think that they've shown this year that they have a quality lineup. So do they miss them or not miss them? I mean, that's up for debate. Uh, but I think that we're fine where we are. Okay. Well, do we have any other thoughts on the weekend? Anything you'd like – any changes you'd like to see maybe? 
I mean, huh. maybe get some other guys in there, maybe a Riley up there, and keep a defenseman back on defense. I mean, any little tweaks or anything else that's on your mind about this weekend? Well, I'm sure that they'll, I mean, because they'll be at home, they'll have that roster flexibility a little bit more than they would obviously in the road. So it wouldn't shock me if you see a guy pop in and out of the lineup for each night. But uh, I liked what I saw the last this last weekend. And I, okay. I, I kind of liked, uh, you know, I, I mean, of course, you don't want to have to double shift guys. But, uh, you know, I didn't think it looked too bad. You know, they were spot double shifts, you know, guys with that fourth line yep. and whatever. Yep. And, uh, you know, so I think that, that that's worked out all right. And, you know, that's not ideal. But uh, I think it's, you know, I think it's fine. Okay. Vigo, any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I like seeing some of the top guys get a little more ice time. I think that's one of the things that, you know, I've been watching over hockey a long time. And one of the things Lucia likes to do is roll four lines, roll 6D. And it's just something I'd like to see the top guys get more ice time. And I kind of like the way this is going with, with those top guys getting more ice time. And I hope I hope we see more of that. And I think you'll see guys in now in the lineup pretty much most of the season. At, you know, at least until we get to February, you know, trying to find who's going to fit in, you know, that third line wing with with Boyd and Ambrose, and and who's going to play on the you know the fourth line that gets paired up with the you know the odd top guy every now and then, and that's just something to watch. Okay, well, uh, do wanted to do a little plug here for this weekend. Uh, the women's team is playing Wisconsin this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, two o'clock both nights or afternoons, I should say. And let's try to fill up Ritter this weekend, people. You know, we got this women's team that's 16-0. and 0. They've scored 98 goals and given up only 10 this season, which is just ridiculous. And, you know, Saturday's games at 2, general admission tickets are a dollar. Come down early, see the women's game, go out, have some dinner, and come back for the night game with UNO for the men. Probably make a great day, but... Uh, you get to see some pretty good hockey. That women's team is just flat out amazing right now. Yeah, I mean it's it is pretty amazing. I mean you just say to yourself, you know, how can that last? You know, they played so well, and, and and you know they've been pretty much dominant against every team that they've played, whether it's been at home or on the road. And um, you know, certainly having Wisconsin coming in this weekend, and they're not quite, uh, from what I understand, you know, like they usually are, but nonetheless, uh, it's you know, probably the Gophers' biggest rival in terms of women's hockey. So, um, it, you know, I think it's a great weekend to have that kind of a promotion. And, you know, it's just a you know good time to get down there. If you've never been to Ritter Arena before, it's a great arena. I mean, what it seats about 3,500 people. Sight lines are great, you know. I'd really like to see them, you know, kind of fill the house and, you know, get a record crowd in there. I mean, a buck, a ticket? That's, uh, <laughs> doesn't get any cheaper than that. Yeah, Ritter's a great rink. It's not like you're going to the Coliseum to watch a game. It's it's a fun place to see a hockey game. I've been up in the press box there, and you're overhanging the ice almost, and it's just a great view from there. So hopefully the women keep that winning ways going. You know, 16-0 and so far this season. I think their streak is over 20 or something ridiculous like that going back to last season. So keep it going, ladies. Well, any other thoughts on this week, guys? We're good to go, I think. Yep. Just kind of pushing the women a little bit there. I think the, oh, they're just an amazing team right now. Well, they deserve it. You know, oh, the way they're they're playing, just, so. I can't. The, the 10 goals allowed in 16 games and 98 scored is just mind-boggling. They're just, yeah, that kind of reminds you of, like, some great, uh, you know, young Pee-wee A team that's uh-huh. just, you know, super mature and just routing everybody that they play at, you know, at that level. And it just kind of reminds you of that, you know, that – you don't usually see that kind of dominance, you know. I mean, granted, you know, women's college hockey is not, you know, and men's isn't either. It's not like it's, uh, you know, a college football with, you know, 300 teams or whatever. And But nonetheless, you usually don't see that kind of dominance at that level. So uh, they certainly deserve all their props. Definitely, definitely. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Remember, you can always follow Hammy on Twitter at Hammy. Hockey, and you can follow Vigo on Go for Puck Live and he has write ups on the games and on Twitter at EVigo. So we'll be back next week. We'll talk about the UNO series and then we'll preview the trip out to Colorado Springs. Until then, thanks for listening. <laughs>